Hello and welcome to today's session of theCUBE presentation of the AWS Startup Showcase, the next big thing in security, featuring Anishian for the security track. I'm your host, John Furrier. We're here with the CEO of Anishian, Rakesh Narasimhan, and Aditya Uparapu, global segment leader of DevOps for AWS Partner Network. Rakesh, Aditya, thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, John. Pleasure is mine. So this is the track session. We're going to get into the, the into the details on the leadership of digital transformation and DevSecOps, automation, cloud security, and compliance. So let's get started. For, but first, for questions, we last talked. You guys had some awards, RSA Conference 2021 virtual. You guys got some serious awards. Give us the update. Yeah, thank you very much, John. Um, yeah, we were you know humbled to to be recognized. Uh, you know, industry uh, recognition is always a great thing. Uh, we deliver value for customers, uh, and the industry is recognizing it. So at the RSA conference, we got seven uh, different awards. You know, very excited that we were chosen for you know Publisher's Choice and Security Company of the Year, uh, Editor's Choice in Cloud Security, and Hot Company in Cloud Security Automation. So really thrilled about uh, the recognition. Thanks. Awesome, seven awards. I mean, RSA is obviously a show that's in transition itself. They're transforming, no longer part of Dell Technologies now kind of on their own. Um, kind of speaks to the wave we're in. And so congratulations on, on, on the success there. Hot startup here in Security Track. Give us a quick overview of what you guys are enabling because this transformation is everywhere. It's in every sector, it's in every vertical. DevSecOps, shifting left, you know, day two operations, GitOps, all this is all talking to one thing developer productivity, programmable infrastructure with security. Rakesh, give us a quick overview. Of yeah, exactly right, John. I think there's a big shift happening obviously to the cloud and you know, it affects every one of our lives in productivity, in enterprise applications, consumers, you name it, there's a huge change happening. But central to that theme is uh, security. Uh, and so it's one of the areas we focus on Anishin is the fastest way for both existing and new applications to be developed in the cloud. And so we make sure that you can get their fastest time to value and time to revenue pretty quickly um, by providing the best secure and compliance environment for you. That's really the core of what we do as a company. And we look forward to helping all of our customers in the industry. Aditya, you're a global segment lead at AWS Partner Network. You're seeing on successful companies, you got a winner here obviously a success story. Uh, I want to get your take on this because this is a trend in cloud native scale, you know, har you know, horizontally scalable, large scale, but shifting left, okay, GitOps, big topics where code is being inspected in real time, people want automation. So I got to ask you, what does shift left mean to, to being uh, out there in, this, in the security world? What does that mean? So instead of applying your uh, security and compliance guardrails, only in production. Uh, we also need to apply them across your application development and delivery cycles. Uh, instead of having uh, one gate that becomes a bottleneck, uh, we should have multiple checkpoints at various stages. Uh, this provides uh, fast feedback for the developers while they're still in the context of uh, developing that feature. So it's easier and uh, less expensive uh, to fix the issues. And uh, what it is not is this doesn't mean you move all your focus to dev and ignore production. Uh, it also doesn't mean developers are now responsible for security and uh, you can get rid of your security teams. <laughs> uh, we need a process and a mechanism in place to leverage the expertise of the security teams and offer their services to uh, the developers very early on in the development cycles, uh, thereby enabling and empowering developers to write uh, secure and compliant code. I mean, to me, not to put my old school hat on, but it's, you know, I think to me, I view it as security at the point of coding, right? At the point of, I don't want to say point of sale, but the point of writing the code. In the old days, it used to be like up patches and getting updates and provisioned into, into production. Same thing, kind of concept, but as a developer, that's kind of the focus is getting the latest knowledge either through tools and technologies to make it easier for me as a developer to inject at the point of code. Is that right? That's right, yeah. So what makes uh, Anishian so different and what's successful within AWS? That's what's the, why the success there? Can you share with us why they're so unique in AWS? So I, I think the, the, the biggest case for that is really 
Now, security oftentimes, uh, security is thought of as an impediment sometimes, actually, believe it or not. Um, so the configuration, the management, the deployment, all of that, uh, you got to be able to do, and you got to be able to do that at scale. The great thing about cloud is scale. And, and a big portion of that is automation. So what we at Anishin have done is taken that life cycle of taking you know, applications uh, on a variety of states, if you will, if you're trying to get to production, uh, you're trying to do one of two things. You're, either you're trying to get into a compliance standard like FedRAMP, you want a very predictable process, or you're just trying to get an application secure pretty quickly. So how can you do either one of those things becomes the challenge. And we help you do that by having a pre-engineered environment where configuration, defining deployment, all of that becomes very consistent and very predictable, which means we've automated it in a way that it can scale. So you can sort of almost have this regularly happening and not just one application with multiple applications for any company. That is, I think the biggest um, obstacle that has happened for a lot of folks in the enterprise, for sure, to try to get to production and keep that cycle going continuously. And we help with that in a big way. That's one of the reasons why we're having a lot of adoption customers, working with partners, of course, and getting industry recognition for it. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the benefits of cloud. I want to get you guys both reaction to this, where as things get going, it's kind of like that you, you, you got to take advantage, you can take advantage of all these solutions. So if I'm an AWS customer, um, I want to look for solutions that help me move the ball forward, not backwards, right? So, or help me move the ball forward without building anything that I don't need, or that's already been built. So here it sounds like, if I get this right, Anishian is saying, hey, if you're an Amazon customer, I can accelerate you with FedRAM compliance. So you don't have to spend all these cycle times getting ready or hiring or operationalizing it. Is that right? I mean, is that the value proposition? Very accurate, John. So what happens is, uh, you know, we're working with Amazon Web Services, who's really innovated quite a bit in building all the building blocks, if you will. And so, you know, we're standing on the shoulders of giants, if you will, to basically get the next level of automation and, and acceleration happen. So that just like customers have gotten used to not having to buy service, but, but guide compute and storage, if you will, now they're able to secure and also become compliant with the services that we offer. That level of acceleration, I think is needed if you believe that there's going to be a lot more cloud applications, a lot more cloud. If you're going to achieve scale, you got to automate. And if you want to automate, but secure as well, you need a mechanism to doing that. That's really where innovation comes in, if you will. Yeah, and I think FedRAM to me is just a great low hanging fruit example because everyone wants to get into the public sector market. They know how hard it is, it's kind of like, you know, we want to do it, but stand in line, we got to get some resources. I mean, I kind of get that. But the question I want to, Rakesh, get you get to you and Aditya is the, the bigger picture, which is, as you said, more cloud applications are coming. So customers in the enterprise have, have or are building fast DevOps teams to accelerate the security paradigm. How do you help those, those folks? Because that's really kind of where the action's going. The puck is going to go there too, right? So beyond FedRAMP, okay. there's other things. Right, so I think I think the way we approached it is really there's like at least two different sets of customers, right? In, in, in the federal market itself, you just think about uh, commercial SaaS companies who are trying to enter the, 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 the public sector market. Well, you need to clear a standard like FedRAMP. So we're the fastest way to not just complete it, but be able to start selling and producing revenue in that new market, producing that functionality, if you will, to that market. Similarly, there's a lot of public sector uh, organizations who are trying to move to the cloud because they've traditionally developed applications and architectures based on what they've done over the last 20 plus years. Well, guess what? They're also trying to migrate. So how do you help both commercial companies as well as public sector companies transition, if you will, to the cloud in a secure way, but also meeting a public standard? We're helping both those organizations do that migration and that journey, if you will. But it's premised on, we've pre-engineered it, it's the fastest way for you to get there, for you to be able to provide your capability and functionality to the larger marketplace. That's one of the main reasons why I think the productivity jump is, is enormously high, because that's how you get to a larger marketplace, if you will, to serve that market. Aditya, so they have to change your title from global segment leader DevOps to DevSecOps, AWS partner network here with this solution. In a way, it's kind of becoming standard. Yeah, uh, security is getting Im embedded into all, all of your uh, development and delivery life cycle. So DevSecOps is becoming more and more uh, critical with uh, customers 
uh, migrating to the cloud and uh, modernizing their applications. How much is automation playing into this? Because one of the, the things that we're talking about fueling digital transformation is the automation component of the security piece here. Rakesh, how important is automation and what, how do you set yourself up for that to be successful? Great, great question. I, I think the, the big key to that is automation is, I think automation is there in general in the cloud uh, space, people expect it, frankly. But I think that the key thing, what we have done is pre-integrated, not just our platform, but a variety of the partner ecosystem around AWS. And so when a customer is looking forward to taking an application and, and going to the cloud, they're not just getting functionality from us and AWS, but also a lot of partner functionality around it so that they don't have to build it. Remember this discussion we had earlier about how do you jumpstart that? Well, it's 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 really, instead of them having to best of breed assemble, we've pre-done it for them, which means it's predictable, it's consistent, it's configured correctly, they can rely on it. That allows us to be able to help them move faster, which means they can go serve larger markets and obviously make money around it. Prakash, I got to follow up on that and ask you specifically around this, yeah. this business model. Obviously cloud has become great service, everyone kind of knows that, and then kind of sees the edge coming next and all these other issues that right. are going to provide more opportunities. But I got to ask you for your company, what industries and business models are you disrupting? Yeah, I think primarily too, uh, we're a classic example of software eating the world, right? Primarily what happens is most of the folks, certainly in the compliance arena, are really trying to figure out how to do it themselves, right? And then that's primarily the group of people who are sort of uh, trying to figure that out. And then there's a class of companies who do consulting, who are trying to consult with you on what you should do. And, and we have taken a very software oriented approach built on Amazon that we will not only help you fast forward that, but also you know, get you compliant but also keep you compliant. Because it's a cycle much like in other industries you've seen, there used to be a time when people did email and they used to run email servers and ran the email service and backups and things of that nature. That transitioned over time where people procure that service from somebody else and it still is secure, it's still is scalable and they can rely on that service without having to be in that business, if you will. So we see us disrupting the consulting and do it yourself world to actually providing a dependable service out there that you can rely on for security and compliance. Awesome, DJ. I got to ask you on the Amazon side. Obviously, you see a lot over there. What are some of the challenges that you see with security? Uh, one of the main challenges I see that is that the the landscape itself is rapidly changing. Uh, as customers are uh, migrating to the cloud and modernizing, um, what used to be a simple monolithic application running on a server in a office or a data center is now distributed, hybrid, and uh, spans across development practices like microservices, uh, managed services, packaged applications, et cetera. Uh, and also in the infrastructure platform choices have dramatically increased uh, to, from on-prem to colo data centers, to edge computing, IOT, uh, VMs, containers, serverless, a uh, lot more options. Uh, all these uh, leads to more complexity and uh, it increased the number of threat vectors exponentially. Uh, though this advancement was great from a usability perspective, it, it now created a whole slew of challenges. Uh, this, this is complex, it's very hard to keep up. Uh, it's not something you set and forget. Uh, one needs to make sure you have the right guardrails in place um, to make sure you're continuously compliant uh, with, with your own policies or also with the regulatory compliance frameworks that are needed for your business, like GDPR, PCI DSS, NIST, HIPAA, SOX, FedRAMP, uh, et cetera. Rakesh, specifically on the DevOps efficiency with Amazon, what are you guys, what's your top few uh, value proposition points you say? Uh, biggest value proposition, for, honestly, is keeping and, and maintaining security while you're doing compliance at scale with speed. I think those are big issues for companies. Like if, you, if you're a company, you're trying to be in the cloud, you want to enter the federal market, for example, you got to get there quickly. So what could take a lot of money, 18, 24 months, error prone, manual, we've just completely automated that. And so within a quarter, depending on how quickly the, the, the two organizations can work, we can get you into the marketplace. That's, that speed 
is of enormous value to companies. But also remember that, as Aditya pointed out, there's a lot of complexity in this, the kind of architecture that has evolved. But we feel like people like Anishin, what we can help customers with is, as much as you take advantage of all the cloud style architecture, providing the simplicity of providing security consistently and providing compliance consistently quickly, I think there will always be a value for that because people are always trying to get faster, cheaper, quicker. And I think we're able to do that. But remember, security is not just about fast. It's got to be secure, right? We got to be effective, not just uh, efficient. So I think that's a big value prop that we're able to bring to the table on AWS. Well, I want to go, I got you here. Obviously we're showcasing you guys as the hot startup. Who is your customer on Amazon? Uh, so you have customers that sell in marketplace for FedRAMP, that's a huge, that's the people who are in business to sell software, but also other enterprises as well, right? So could you just quickly break down your customers and then when do they know it's time to call Anishin? Yeah, so we have two large groups of uh, customers, if you will, certainly the commercial segment, as well as in the public sector. In the commercial side, you have lots of companies in the cybersecurity, enterprise collaboration, as well as robotic process automation, all of those categories of com companies in the commercial environment, they're trying to enter the, the public sector, federal market to go sell their services. Well, you have to get compliant. We are the fastest path to get you there. Time to value, time to revenue, we can accomplish for you. That's a group of customers we, uh, we have in, in market. And then we have the other side, which is a lot of government agencies who are themselves trying to migrate to the cloud. So if you're trying to get your applications, which were once on hybrid or on-premise and you're trying to go to the AWS cloud, well, we're a great way for you to have a pre-engineered environment into which you can move in. So not only are you secure, it's pre-built, it can scale to the cloud that you're trying to migrate to. So we have both those particular sides, if you will, of the marketplace. And then in market, we have lots of agencies, big and small on the government side, but also all these categories in the commercial side that I mentioned. Rakesh, Anishin's helping a lot of companies sell into the public sector market. How big is the public sector federal market? It's, yeah, billions of dollars. More than $250 billion is what people say, but it's a very large market. But, but remember, it's any, any commercial SaaS company who's trying to go into that federal market is, is a target market we can help uh, that customer get in, into that market. And just real quick, their choice alternative to not working with Anishin is what? Months well, of pain and what's the heavy lift? As Andy Jassy would say, the, the heavy lifting, undifferentiated heavy lifting. A lot of paperwork, a lot of hoops to jump through. Can, can you just paint a picture of the paths with and right, without I, I Anishin? There's three three areas that I think uh, customers or you know companies have to do. A, they have to understand the standard. B, they have to really figure out the technology, the integration, the partners, and the platform itself. So it's it's, it's a lift to basically get all of that together, and then actually produce the documentation, produce all the configuration and in a repeatable way. And that's just to get one application up there. Well, guess what? Not only do you need to get that up there. You need to keep that compliant. And then as future standards come in, you need to go upgrade to that. So the best way for me to describe that is either you, you come to Anishin and we make that a just a service that you subscribe to, to keep you compliant and, and grow, or you could try to build it yourself, or you try to go get consulting companies to tell you what to do. You still have to do the work. So those are your sort of choices, if you will, which is one of the reasons why we're enjoying the growth we are because we're making it easy and productive for, for companies to get there faster. Aditya, I want to get to you real quick. Obviously, AWS partner, also known as APN. You guys see some of the best hot startups. They all kind of have the same pattern like this. They do something that's hard, they make it easier, they go faster, um, more cost effective. Um, what's the pattern in this cloud scale world? As startups, we're going to be featuring, you know, every, as much as we can, hot startups coming out of your network. There's a pattern here. What would you say they are? Well, the DevOps, obviously cloud native, besides iterate, move faster. What's the pattern you're seeing for the successful companies? It's uh, like, like Andy uh, says, uh, it's figuring out how to uh, continuously reinvent yourself is the key to uh, stay successful in, in this market. Awesome. Prakash, real big success. Congratulations on your awards. I got to ask you, um, we're asking all the, all the companies this question, what is your defining contribution 
to the future of cloud scale? Great question. Um, I think when I think about what can be accomplished in the future, uh, not just in the past, I think cloud is a huge uh, phenomenon that has completely upended the architecture for all sorts of things, commercial, government, you know, uh, consumer, enterprise, if you will. Uh, I would think we would be humbly the people who ensure that lots of B2B companies and government organizations are able to move to the cloud and are able to be secure and compliant because I believe that there'll be more and more of that happening in the cloud and the more that is available, just like the commercial world is takes advantage of all those features. I feel like public sector government organizations also can accomplish the same things very quickly because of folks like us, which means you have a larger segment of population that you can support. That's only going to make the planet more successful. I'm a big optimist when it comes to tech. I know there's a lot of folks who would look down upon tech or, or think about that as not great. I'm a very big optimist around tech improving people's lives. And I think we have our own humble role in enabling that to happen in the security and compliance. Well, anything, in my opinion, I'm really a big fan of your work and your team. Anything that could bring great innovation into the public sector faster and more effective uh, is good win for society. So I think uh, it's a great mission. Thanks for, for sharing and congratulations on your awards and thanks for uh, being part of our AWS Startup Showcase. Appreciate it, Rakesh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is the uh, CUBE coverage of AWS Startup Showcase. I'm John Furrier, your host of the CUBE. This is the next big thing in security, uh, Nishan in the security track. Thanks for watching.